Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. I know what I'm about to do is going to seem a little bit off-putting to some people, and it might even be a little bit edgy. And I don't know any other parallel that I can describe it to, but let me describe this to you in this way. I think about COVID and what healthcare professionals have to do, and I think it's something that has got to be a daunting task, and that is tracing. You know, following how people are interacting with people who was in front of other people, and, you know, how do we trace people and see who's exposed to the virus? And yesterday I did a call with somebody who was not a client, but somebody we, who was reaching out to me was provided my name through somebody and, and she was really, really complaining. And I could feel this edge in this person's voice and I could almost feel the edge of, for lack of better description, having to work with her. And as I was discussing things with her, she was complaining about her boss. And she was complaining about what do you do when he doesn't listen to you and he's just abrupt and he thinks he's always right and he thinks he's this and he thinks he's that. And I always laugh at those comments because I, I think they're red flags. When somebody says he thinks this and thinks that, do we really know what somebody else is thinking? Probably not. So I asked her, I said, what do you want from him now that you're not getting? Now, the funny thing was during the course of the conversation, when there was a pause, I would ask a question or offer a thought, and she would interrupt. She would disrupt. She would speak over me. And I think we're all guilty of that, so I didn't read too much into it. Yet, she was exhibiting the exact behaviors that she was complaining about, which was interesting to me. So I said, so how have you dealt with this? So she didn't really have an answer of what specifically she wanted from him that he wasn't getting. But essentially, she said, you know... I want him to listen more. I want him to take some of my ideas more seriously. Now, those comments about he thinks that and he thinks this and I want him to take my ideas more seriously, there's a lot of conjecture in those comments. So I asked her, how have you dealt with this up to this point? What have you done to successfully deal with this? She said, I'm not fine. I said, well, have you, you know, have you confided in someone where, you know, to get their advice? And she says, yes, I've talked to a coworker. I said, oh, describe your relationship with the coworker. And I got real upbeat and I got real friendly. And the reason I did that is I wanted to ascertain transparency and honesty. And she started to tell me that she had met this person at work. So this was not a personal friend per se. And then I said, well, who else have you confided in? Because, you know, these are tough issues. And she went on to tell me about one or two other people outside the department. And she got done. And I said, so I have to ask you something. And I said, I think this is going to come off really abrupt. And I feel comfortable doing this because you opened the door and I hope, I really hope you're okay with this. And I could tell she was kind of tough and she wasn't going to back down from anything. And I kind of used that to my advantage. She said, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm a completely transparent, honest person. I said, awesome. So how have those three people communicated what you said to other people? Oh, I asked them not to, she said. I said, Really? You're 100% sure of that. And all of a sudden, her voice changed. 
She said, well, I hope they haven't. I said, so I'd like to state back some things to you factually. And what I'd like to do is ask you to take a deep breath before you respond. You're going to want to respond right away. Heck, you're going to want to interrupt me. You're going to want to probably even talk over me because this is going to be tough what I'm about to do. Yet, I'd love your permission to share some facts with you. She said, okay, total tone change. So what was I doing? I was tracing conversations. I was tracing conversations. I said, I promise you, one of those three people have shared your comments. I promise you on both of my kids' lives, I guarantee you to some level, they have shared that. So my next question is, I don't need explanation. I need a yes or no. Have you spoke to your boss directly about this? She said, no. I said, okay. So factually what you've done is I haven't heard him yell at you. I've heard you, I think, assume he doesn't take your stuff seriously. I think I've heard you say or assume he thinks a certain way. Both things you really probably don't know factually. So I'm stating that factually. You probably don't literally know that. And we were on a Zoom call and she nodded. And I said, so what you've done factually, you haven't gone to the source. You've talked about your boss to three other people. You've personally, professionally taken a risk that heaven forbid... Those three people tell another person and that person gets back to your boss. What would happen to your relationship with your boss? And more importantly, would he ever want to listen to one of your ideas? Would he ever want to take your ideas seriously? Now, before you answer, I want you to take a deep breath and think about what I just said. Factually, if there's anything that you'd like to dispute, let's start there. If you can't dispute factually, I want you to think about conversations much like the virus, the COVID virus. We have to trace this stuff and we can't assume that we're not giving it to other people and they're not spreading it. And it's a crass analogy. It's a rough analogy during these times. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks, everybody, because my first thought was, are you kidding? You're not going to go to your boss. You're going to tell three other people. You've interrupted me this whole conversation. You were referred to me. I'm taking a coaching call on my dime, which I'm fine doing. And so what I was doing is I was tracing the steps. See, what happens, everybody, is conversations take on life forms. They become events. And yesterday, I saw one of the absolute best presentations of a company on a show, the Talent Development Think Tank by Andy Storch. It was just fantastic. And it is so interesting when you learn from other people. And it's just so invigorating because when you think about all the things that we need to do and all the things that we need to do to improve our ability. I was watching a presentation by the CEO at Hitch, and it was just fantastic. It was really good. And she talks about how to keep talent internally and how to optimize it and how to spread talent across an organization. And I do not dispute anything she said. It was fantastic. And I think about conversations. They spread across organizations. How often, how often do we hear people Label other departments. Oh, that department never gets back to me. Yet, maybe it's just one person who never gets back to you. How often have we heard customer service departments describe sales departments as, they don't care, they're just in it for the money. I had that years ago from a customer service rep. I said, so how do you know they're just in it for the money? Well, all salespeople are like that. I said, they are? I said, I'm a salesperson. I'm not in in it for the money. Have they told you that? She goes, well, no, but you can tell. I said, well, how can you tell? And she said, you ask a lot of questions. I said, yes, I'm trying to help you because you're making a gross generalization and a wild assumption that I hope doesn't bite you. How would it bite me? I said, if a sales rep heard that you said that, 
do you think they might feel like they were labeled? I mean, don't we all do that? So often, conversations spread like viruses. Again, I know it's a crass analogy. And it's so funny. I've coached volleyball for 30 years. And one of my closest friends was talking to a parent and she said, boy, you know, my kid played volleyball for Tim. And I got to tell you, that guy is, is really, really abrasive. And my friend went into questioning mode. And he goes, oh, you, what do you mean? Well, I went and talked to him about why my kid wasn't playing as much as I thought he should. And my friend goes, so what's your volleyball background? And the person said, well, you know, I, I didn't play. I played, you know, I played a little bit, but I mean, you know, I play every week at the bar league. And my friend said, Tim's played against guys on the Olympic team. He's been immersed in volleyball for 30 years. So why do you think he was abrasive? The person said, well, um, he was just so direct. My friend said, well, what question did you ask him? Well, I asked him why my kid wasn't playing. And my friend said, was he dishonest with you? He said, no. Did he fudge some of the information to make you feel good about it? The person said, no. He said, did he joke with you? Did he try to crack some jokes? Because he jokes around a lot. The person goes, yeah. He said, you use the word abrasive. How was he abrasive? The person said, well, he was just so direct about my kid's ability. My friend then said, so what would happen if he placated or fudged the information? What would you assume? The person goes, boy, that's a great point. I wasn't abrasive. I was very honest. I asked for permission. Probably came off abrasive. But the minute we mince those words, people hear different things. Yet that conversation took on a life form. Yet he didn't tell my friend initially, I sought Tim out. Tim is just abrasive. He just arbitrarily came up to me and was abrasive. I don't even know the guy. Forgot to tell my friend, he's the one who scheduled the meeting. Conversations take on life forms. They become events. And I know it can be an exercise in exhaustion to trace conversations. I am not suggesting that. What I'm suggesting is that we as leaders, we as employees, we as thoughtful professional going above and beyond the call of duty for the good of the organization employees, we realize if somebody could trace our conversations, we have to ask ourselves a question. Would we be okay? Or would we be at risk? So you're talking or listening, I should say, to somebody who just got over COVID. I know exactly where I got it. I got it from my volleyball team or the school. I know where I got it because I go to my office. I've quarantined. We've really been very safe. Yet, I knew exactly where I got it. How often do we hear things that are taken out of context and are unfair to the person that either said it or wasn't even spoken to. I'll give you one last example. About 30 days ago, I had an employee, uh, actually a team leader, contact me. It was really upset about the feedback she got from her boss. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I asked her, I said, well, how did the feedback come, up, come about? Well, he called me in his office. I did not seek the feedback. I said, okay. She said, I'm just frustrated because I just did not agree with this feedback. So I said, would you mind if I shared with you kind of a wild statement? And she said, sure. I said, who cares if you agreed? The point of feedback is not for you to agree or disagree. The point of feedback is for you to extract what you can learn from it. Yet you immediately went into agree or disagree. If you disagree, wouldn't that be an opportunity to re-clarify or to re-communicate? I said, so in that moment, can I ask you another question? And I want you to be really honest. Skill one to six. Six, you are emotional. You could feel your angst, your agitation. Or one, you were pretty calm. She said, I was a five or a six. I said, so what you did is you emotionally reacted to feedback that you didn't agree or disagree. So you went into right-wrong mode. So can I ask you a question? She said, sure. I said, what would you learn from the feedback? 
She said, boy, I'd have to give that some thought. I said, maybe there's the lesson. She said, yeah, I think you're right. And I go, I'm not trying to be right. We listen emotionally. I said, so I'm going to ask you a question. Have you shared that frustration with other people? She said, yep. I was just thinking that and I shouldn't have done that. I said, sure. Sometimes when we have emotional responses, we want to get it off our chest. We want to share it by sharing frustrations. We unload, we decompress, we lower our stress, we lower our anxiety. Yet we inherently take risk we don't need to. Conversations take on a life form. They become events. So the question should always be, if we traced our conversations, would we be okay or would we be at risk? Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called coach to you where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign seven to 21 day programs for employees to learn and more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called coach to you. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.